This video is brought to you by Azam Sharp School. You can go to azamsharp.school to find out one of the largest catalogs for iOS development videos. Let's go ahead and check out some courses. You can see that on Azam Sharp School, you can find courses about MVVM design pattern, core data, MV pattern, full stack iOS development, reactive programming, even Swift data and server driven UI, create ML, trust him in development, reality kit, and many more. And there are also workshops. These will be live workshops accessible to everyone. The pricing is just insanely low, only $50, and you get two to three hours of live workshop on Zoom about Vapor, and then you have Swift data fundamentals, and even unit testing. So go to adamsharp.school, and learn iOS development. Now let's go ahead and see that how we can save our list to the database. We have already created the user interface. And in order to save the list, we are going to take help from the reminder service that we will have to implement. I'm gonna go and create a new group. I will call it services. You can think of services or reminder service as kind of like a domain service, which is going to be responsible for persistent operations, uh, running some logic and then persisting using the view context. So I'll simply call it reminder service. But if you have multiple or a lot much bigger application, you may be able to create more domain services if you want to. That is perfectly fine. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and import core data. I'm also going to import UI kit. Now, the reason that I'm importing UI kit, which doesn't really sound good over here, is because I may have to use UI color. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that. I will say reminder service. Now, in the reminder service, you can create an instance of the reminder service or you can expose the functions as a static functions. So first, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a simpler property called view context, which is NS manage object context. And we can simply get that property, the view context from the persistent container view context. And the reason that I'm creating this particular property view context is so that it is easily accessible. Now I can go ahead and create functions that are going to perform saving a list. So static function, save my list. You're gonna pass in the name of the list that you're trying to save and the color that is associated with that list. Again, we can make this so that you don't have to type the labels. We can make it something like this. It can throw an exception. Next, we're gonna go ahead and create a my list, which is already one of the classes that we have created, which represents the entity my list. We're going to pass in the view context. And now we can go ahead and assign the name, which will be a name, and my list.color will be the color. And finally, we can call the save function. Now for the save function, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a helper function called save, which simply saves the context so that we can call it other places also if we need to. The save function is simply saving the context. What's inside the context will be saved. And for save my list, the my list will be the only thing inside the context. So that will be persisted to the database. Now what we want to do is to start using it. If we jump into the home view, you will see that this is where we are getting all the information. When the person selects a particular name, types in the name and selects a color, the add new list view closure is going to get fired, giving you the name and the color. And this is our opportunity to call the reminder service dot save my list. Passing in the name, passing in the color. Now, since the reminder service dot save my list is a function that can blow up, we have to wrap this around with the do catch. And then we will say catch, print, if there's any error, we can print it out. And that is going to allow us to persist it to the database. 
Now, one of the things that we still need to do is when we persist something in the database, if you look at the reminders model and you look at the color attribute, you will find out that the color attribute, the type is transformable, which means that it will be stored in the database as one type, but when we get it back, we want to get it back as UI color. And the thing that is going to be transforming that type from the type in the database, like probably binary, to uh, serialized binary, to the UI color will be UI color transformer. Now, we don't really have any UI color transformer, which means that when we try to get this information, uh, then it's going to be a problem. So we need to create our transformers. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new group. Let's call it transformers. And for our application, we will only have one transformer, which will be a UI color transformer. So I'll just call it UI color transformer. The job of the transformer is to transform the value and then reverse the value also. So you'll see in a moment that what the transformer is actually doing. We will go ahead and create a class. We will call it UI color transformer. And this will be of type value transformer. You can create as many transformers as you want. Maybe you are storing something uh, different in your model or which is part of your model. Right now, if I select color, you can see that I'm storing UI color and with the help of UI color transformer. So make sure that the name of the transformer matches exactly with the transformer type that we just added, which is UI color transformer. When you're creating UI color transformer or any kind of a value transformer, you need to implement a couple of different function. One of them is called the transform value, and the other one is called the reverse transform value. So going to the transform value first, the transform value is going to serialize the color that you're going to pass in, and it is going to basically return you the data. The reverse transform value is going to take the data and then unarchive it back to the color. So let's move to the first one, the transform value, where we are getting the color. So let's go ahead and get the color. Color equals to value as UI color, because that is what we are storing. Else, if it's not color, then return if we cannot even you know, unwrap it correctly, then we have to return nil. Once again, you can see that the UI color is contained in UI kit, so we need to import that or else it will keep on complaining. Once we get the color, we can go ahead and archive it. So we can call ns keyed archiver dot archive the data, and we're gonna pass in a couple of different things over here. We're gonna pass in the color and required secure coding. So that's the second argument. You can set it to true and false. If you look at this documentation for secure coding, it's just a Boolean value, whether all encoded object must conform to secure coding, all right? So if they're conforming to secure coding or not, we're just gonna pass in true over here. I don't think it matters in our case that much. And then we're gonna get the data, okay? This can blow up, so we're gonna wrap it with do and try and all that stuff. Catch, if there's an error, well, there's nothing really we can do. We can just return nil. So that's the implementation of the transform value. And the reverse transform value is going to do the reverse of what we did over here. So the reverse transform value will be, we'll get the data, and then we will transform it to a UI color and return it. Okay, so let's first go ahead and build this. I'm not sure why it is complaining over here. Let's see. Um, okay, we'll check that out. Oh, I think we have to return, sorry. So let's go back to our function over here and return the data. We forgot to do that in the transform value. So that line is needed. We just added that. And in the reverse transform value, we're doing the reverse thing. So we over there in the transform value, we were archiving the data. 
but in the reverse, we are unarchiving the data. So we're going to use the NS keyed unarchiver. So let's look for unarchiver, this one, dot unarchive of a particular class, which we're looking for is the UI color dot self and the data. So it's going to unarchive it, the data, change it to the color, that's what we need. And now again, we have to wrap it with do and try and all that stuff because it can blow up. If it blows up, then we can simply return nil. If it doesn't, well, in that case, we can simply return the color. So that will be the implementation of the UI color transformer. But we're not really done yet because right now, our core data provider does not know anything about these transformers that you have loaded. So we need to go back to our core data provider, which is setting up our core data stack, and we need to go ahead and register the custom transformers, the one that you just created. So we're going to say value transformer dot set value transformer and pass in the name of the transformer that you want to register. So I'm just going to go ahead and register one because we only have one UI color transformer and some sort of a friendly name that you want to give it. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it some name. Uh, you can give it any name you want. Just make sure it is unique. UI color transformer. Okay. And that is pretty much it. That's all you need to do. And now if you had more transformers, because maybe you were storing some transformable information, more entity properties that are transformable, you have to register it over here also. We don't really have it anyway, so we only have one, which is the UI color transformer, which we have already registered. Now let's go ahead and run the application. Now keep in mind that when we are running the application, one of the things that we still need to do, which we haven't done, is probably we need to go to our reminders app, which is the main file, and we need to make sure that this home view, the environment object for the manage object context is set correctly. So let's go ahead and do that. Core data provider dot shared dot persistent container dot view context. And the reason we have to do that is that eventually inside our views, we will be using the fetch request property wrapper and the fetch request property wrapper, take a look at the environment keys and if it's not there then it's not going to work so that is why we're doing that now if you want to do this for your xcode previews let's go back over here we still have to inject it right there so i'll say environment object or in, not environment object but environment key and i need to inject it correctly over here there we go okay so that you can even use it uh, from your Xcode previews. Now let's go ahead and run this. Right now we may be able to save a particular my list, but we are still not displaying anything. So that's a different story. We still need to figure out that how we can uh, display all the my lists. So you can already see that Xcode preview is kind of like churning right now. It's working hard. Uh, you can even run the application on the simulator if you want, or you can try the Xcode preview. Okay, so there we go. Xcode preview is working. Make sure this line is there because eventually you will be needing that. I'll say add list. Okay, so right now you can see the done button is faded out because I haven't really written any line of any lines over here for the list name. I can close it if I want to, that's fine. But let's go ahead and add a list over here. I'm just going to call it green list. And I can select different colors. So green list, I'll just make it green. And I'll say done. And I think hopefully it has actually saved it in the database. Now we can't really see if it has saved in the database, because our code is not displaying the values. So we don't really know if it saved it or not. So let's go ahead. And in the next lecture, we'll be looking at how to fetch the data using core data framework from the SQLite database and display it on the screen.